Okay. In this video, we'll talk about where linear functions come from and how you can compute their slopes from them. Okay. So linear functions, they're kind of the most basic sort of building block that we have in mathematical. Linear functions are the most basic mathematical modeling building blocks. Okay, and when we get to statistics next semester, you know, most functions and most models that you'll build out of the data is, are just going to be linear models. Okay, so understanding how linear models work and how linear functions are, are formed and how to deal with them is pretty important. Blocks. Okay, and so these arise pretty naturally just from, you know, our unit conversions that we had in the previous videos, you know, different proportionality relationships, right, proportional relationships, you know, and other places. Okay. So let's start with an example. Okay, so, you know, converting between units, a dimension is the same as zero. Okay, right? let's say converting from feet miles. Okay. So if you remember we said okay, we have one mile is equal to fifty two eighty. So if we wanted to build a function that takes X feet and gives us Y miles, right? Where Y is some function of X, that's gonna have to give us you know the number of miles in X feet. Okay. Let's say uh, we mess with this relationship again, and we'll get that y equals f of x is equal to x divided by 52. Okay. And so what does this look like when we plot it? Okay, so when x is 0, y is also 0. Okay. 0 feet is the same as 0 miles, but then once you get up to 50 to 80 feet on the x-axis here, now you finally reached one mile, okay? And then we don't get to the second mile until we've gone another 50 to 80, right? There are 50 to 80 feet in a mile, 10,560 feet in two miles, okay? And it'll keep going like this so we can connect line. This is a straight line, okay? And so, you know, um, when you're dealing with these linear functions, you want to say, okay, make sure I know what the slope is. Let's say we didn't know how to compute it from the formula, and we just wanted to compute it from the graph itself. Well, the slope, remember, uh, maybe from a long time ago, maybe you learned that it was rise over run. Another way we can say this is the change in the output of our function over the change in input. Right? You know, our change in y versus our change divided by our change in x. Okay, so we pick any two points on our graph let's pick, and we ask, okay, what's the change in y here? Right, from here to there, change in y was one mile. Okay, and the change in x from here to here, right, change in x we went up by 50 to 80. Okay, so our slope is our rise over our run, change in output over change in input, delta y over delta x. That's going to be one mile divided by 5280, right? Or one over 5280 miles per foot. Okay, and this is the same, you know, proportionality constant that we could have obtained just from our proportional relationship, right? We divide both sides by 50 to 80 feet. We get one over 50 to 80 miles foot equal to one. Okay. So then, if we check our units in this function here, right? Y is in miles. Right. We want this function of x to turn feet into miles. And what's our function? Well, according to this, it's x feet times one over 50 to miles per feet. Okay, we multiply this through, we get x over 5280 miles 
and the feet cancel out. So we indeed have a function that turns x feet into y miles, and we have the, the proportionality constant that is correct. Okay. So maybe let's do another example where it's not coming straight from a unit conversion. Right, so remember we did you know, this mass of the sphere of liquid in the previous video. Okay, and so uh, mass is proportional to volume and the proportionality constant is the density. Stuck, sorry. Okay, my other note sheet was stuck. But anyways, we have mass and volume are proportional by this constant density. Right, so you know, in, in the example we had last time, we had a drop of mercury, which has a density of around 14 grams per centimeter. Okay, so if we were going to plot n in grams, the mass of our, our object, our sphere of liquid, versus the volume of that liquid in centimeters cubed, then they're proportional by 14 grams per centimeter. So when you have, you know, zero volume, right, you have no mercury, it should weigh zero grams, right? Because 14 times zero is zero. When you have one centimeter cube, right, you'll have n equals 14 times one, you'll have 14 grams. When you have two centimeters cubed, you'll have twice that, 28 grams, right? So this would be our, our function, right? Straight line, slope 14, right? And we can check our slope again, right? We can check you know, from here to here. Well, our delta y, right, we went up by 14 grams, and we went up in our input, right, our delta x was one centimeter cubed, right? So our slope, right, our rise over run, change in input, or our change in output over change in input, our delta y over delta x, Right, that's 14 grams over one centimeter cube. Right, so that's 14 grams, which we said was the density. Right, that's our proportionality constant. Okay, and so whenever you're thinking about a linear function that has associated units and dimensions, you have to include the units of your slope, right? Your slope necessarily has units to it as well. Okay, so let's do one last example. Well, now we're going to be converting between units again, but these units don't share a zero, right? So they're not going to be completely proportional, right? For converting between degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit, they're actually related by a linear equation, right? A degree of Fahrenheit is 1.8 degrees Celsius plus 32 because the zero is different, okay? So if we're to plot this one where X is going to be our degree Celsius, Y is going to be a degree Fahrenheit, right? We can turn this into a linear equation. Right, we can say this is y equals uh, 1.8x plus 32, where x is going to be in degrees Celsius and y is going to be. Okay, then um, if we plot this function, right, when x is 0, y is going to be 32, right? We know the freezing point of water in degrees Celsius is 0, and in Fahrenheit, it's 8. Sorry. We start up here. Okay, and then let's say at 10 degrees Celsius, this will become 18, gives us 50, and then at 20 degrees Celsius, we'll get another 18, so we'll go up to. Right, so if we plot this, get a straight line of slope 1.8, but it has an intercept of 32 instead of 0. So when these things were perfectly proportional, like they were up here, in the previous example, they always are going to pass through zero because zero of one thing gives you zero of the other. But in this case, uh, the zero or the intercept is not shifted up. And that's because they don't share a zero in, the, in that unit. Okay, so we can check the uh, we can check the slope of this to make sure it matches up. Right? We can say, okay, if we look at between these two points, our little triangle. Let's say, okay, our change in y here, we went up by 18 degrees Fahrenheit. And our change in input, right, we went up by 10 degrees Celsius. So our slope, 
right, I've changed an input, change an output over change an input, 18 delta y over delta x, right, that's 18 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, which gives us 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit per degree Celsius, okay? And so then that matches up with the slope that we had up here, and it provides the appropriate unit conversion from Celsius to Okay, we'll stop here for now.